Testing, mm -hmm. testing. Unmuted. All right, Melissa, can we test your microphone? Hi, Please. can you hear me? Um, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was a little muffled there for a moment. I was just waiting for something else. All right, I think we're okay. Can you see the screen? Are we all good? Yeah, we're on the screen. All right. All right. Hey, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Okay. All right. I think we're okay here. Again, I thought you were a little muffled when we first started speaking here. So, all right, let's just get into it with a two-sentence intro and then what you're on. You can find our fifth presenter at the Stock Swoosh. Please welcome Melissa Armo. Hello there, everyone. Welcome this evening. Great day to be here. Big sell up in the market today. And again, my name is Melissa Armo and I own the Stock Swoosh. For those of you who don't know what I do, I focus on gaps and we're going to talk about that tonight. But particularly, I do focus on shorts. So the market gapped down today and sold off big time. And we're going to run through the webinar I prepared tonight. I did put a slide into the market. If we have time, I can pull up some charts here, see what the market's doing after hours. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about how you can learn how to read and trade the patterns of institutional money and gaps. So this is me. For those of you that don't know me, uh, I own the Stock Swish. I also appear regularly on Fox Business and Fox News, and I talk about the stock market. So it's very interesting. I've been talking about the market for the last few weeks, and I've been discussing about the fact that I thought there was a potential for the market to rally at some point in December, but I didn't have 100% conviction that the market would make new highs by the end of the year. And after the sell-off today, I definitely do not think that that occurs. Now, I could be wrong. The market could make a new high, but there would have to be a tremendous amount of what we're going to talk about tonight, institutional buying that would have to come in to turn this market around because we just fell so big and so fast today. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. So let's get right into it. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight is day trading, okay? I'm going to talk to you about day trading. You can day trade for a living if you want to, but you have to have a structure. So for me, my structure means I get up in the morning, I prep and decide what stocks I want to trade in the morning, I have a rating system that I rate, and I do all of this before the market even opens, then I have my list of the picks, then I watch them, then I wait for the setups into the open, I'm usually in trades between 9.30 and 10.00, and then I'm in and I'm out. So that is how I do it. And I am very structured, like I said. Uh, so we will talk about this more and some trades here. So if you've never thought about trading for a living, it is possible, even if you don't live you know, in New York. Now I happen to live in New York, but it's not like the olden days where you had to move to New York and work on Wall Street. In fact, many of the hedge funds and many of the big firms are actually not even downtown anymore. They're in Midtown. Uh, so it's very interesting. You can be a trader, you can be a full-time trader, and you can live anywhere in the world. You, can, you don't even have to live in the U.S. You, all you need is an internet connection and a brokerage account. And one of the reasons that many people that live in foreign countries like to trade the U.S. market is because the U.S. market has a lot of volatility and momentum, and today was a great example of that. Um, I'm trying to look here through here, the questions. I'll try to go through the questions as towards the end here. How does that sound, everybody, if I see them on the side here? Anyways, this was the results for November. I'm not going to go through each ticker symbol here today because I don't have time, but you can certainly go to my YouTube, look at some of the trading room videos and the reviews of some of these trades. You will see here, though, it's pretty obvious that I'm trying to stick to one ticker symbol a day, maybe two, but I really do try to stick on one thing because all you need is one trade a day to be profitable. And also the less trades you take, guess what? The less losses you have. So I find that less is more if you wanna make a lot of money uh, in the market. Now I did clip this here. This is the SPY. So we're, I'm just gonna review this briefly. But what I focus on is gaps. So this is very interesting. And again, going back to what I was saying about volatility, the market closed here. This was Friday, okay? Friday, we had the rally last week. The market had a big gap up here. This was the day the Fed came out with some news. The market liked it, rallied big. Then we gapped down. Then we opened neutral. Then we rallied. This was Friday. Then we gapped up. So for those of you that don't know what a gap is, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. So the close of this gap here, again, this is Friday, was around 275 and change. Then we had a huge move. This was overnight after the summit. 
and we closed here and we had a big gap up to start out Monday morning. So actually what happened here was buying. So the only way that the market, and again, I'm looking at the SPY, uh, the only way that this could have gone from 275 to all the way up over 280 overnight, so this is from 4 o'clock Friday night until 9.30 when we open Monday morning, the only way that happens is what? It's buying. So institutional, no, just listen to what I'm saying here, institutional money came into the market and bought it from Friday night overnight in the post market and in the pre-market into Monday morning. The futures were up. They were, we were up big Sunday night. I mean, I saw it as soon as the futures opened. And then what happened? Then, this is again, the close of Monday. We did not follow through Monday, meaning we didn't follow through higher. Okay, so the market gapped up, but then we didn't follow through. There really was no play here on the actual day on Monday to play the market. Now, I, I try to focus on stocks, but I do read the market because I'm talking about it a lot on Fox. And so I'm talking about the market today because of the sell-off. Anyways, what happened here was this. So then we closed Monday. This is 4 o'clock. And then we gap down. Now, this was a baby gap down that happened. But what happened is what? The weight. The weight of this gap down took it. And once the selling started to come into the market today, again, we closed here and we opened here. So this isn't like crazy. But once the selling took over, it like had this by the throat and then it died. And that's what happened. This was an, a, a really, really big sell off today in the market. I mean, there was no denying it. And if you wanted to make money today, you pretty much had to be short something. Um, somebody's saying something about what? Let me see if I can back up. Um, how do you, how do you institutional money entering? You never answer this. What's your question? I don't understand your question, Michael. Maybe if you can repeat that for me. Um, how, so why would institutions enter and exit the same day? First of all, there, there was no exiting and entering the same day. So let, I mean, if you want me to go back, the, the, I mean, if you want me to talk about the market specifically, the buying came in overnight here, and then you had selling that came in the next day. So it's not the same day, but I will tell you this, and I don't want to get too off topic here. We can go over this if we have time when I'm done with the lecture that I prepared, but I will tell you right now, there's a lot of different institutions in the market. You have ABC hedge fund, you have this bank, you have that bank. They're not all doing the same things. So that is why it is extremely important to make good choices and decisions to read it right. Because you may, you did have buying that came in. And I will tell you right now that the gap that happened in the market from Friday night to Monday was the biggest gap that ever happened here in the SPY going back to 1999, which is almost 20 years because I looked at it Monday morning. So that buying was real. The sell-off today was real as well. But to answer Michael's questions, no, you didn't have the same people come in and flush right out. And again, we'll talk about that more when I have time at the end. But the long and short of it here, the synopsis, hopefully this answers Michael's question for now, is that I'm still bullish on the market. I'm not screaming jump up and down and sell the world and short the world today after the sell-off. I'm talking about today specifically because if you want to learn what I know, and you want to trade with me, you're going to be focused on day trading. So the market today was a day trade. That's a big difference than long term. Long term, the market is bullish. And I don't believe we break the trend unless we have some kind of war, that, which, you know, that could happen. Um, anyways, let's get back to this and then I can go back around and just pull up the chart of the market and, and maybe answer that more specifically at the end. But what you want to look at, at on in any chart is the gap itself. And then I prepare by rating it and I have a 26 point rating system. Now, what was another move today? Aim at. I'm just going to show you this one here. Again, this closed here, gapped up again with the overall market. This was from Friday to Monday. Then it gapped down. Didn't really go anywhere on Monday. Today was the play. Today was a short. So this move went right into the target and fell like a brick. This was working in the morning as a sell-off before the market started to break. So when you're, when you're trading, what you want to look at is the footsteps of power that come in. Because if you can trade with that move, 
guess what? It's gonna be a lot easier for you to make money. When you're going against that power, it's difficult. And you know what I mean, and we don't scalp. I'm looking for a move, I'm looking for momentum, I'm looking for it to come in and come in big. But if you're against what's happening, whether you're long or short, if you've ever traded before, you know what that feels like. It feels like, oh, it's not going, it's not going. Or when you're up, it's just like pennies. When you are an active day trader, and again, we're talking about day trading, which means you're in and out, you're in after 9.30 and you're out before four, not doing post or pre-market trading. But anyways, you are needing that. You have to have that momentum. You have to have that move, okay? And usually we're looking for a dollar or more. Anyways, I usually focus on only a 30 to 60 minute period of time in the morning to trade between 9.30 and 10. Sometimes we'll be in trades later. Today, AMAT was a later trade, but most of the days, I'd say of the 200 plus trading days of the year, I'm in and out very, very quick. Now here was the aim at, talk about institutional selling. You see where it happened. Now again, this moved before the market fell like a brick. The market did help this move, but it didn't do anything for this in the morning. This fell and actually you could have captured this and been out of this and in this in the first 15 minutes of the day. Here's the gap down in aim at, stop close to your gap down. This is the first 15 minute bar. So you see here where it opened around 38 and change and the low of this bar is 37. You could have played that first bar, got out, got out in the first 15 minutes and been done for the day and walked away. The fact is that it kept going, but if you do a train in the morning and you're up right away, you can take it and be done and just leave. But the market fell later and it was around this period here. So this didn't back up at all. So this did not back up whatsoever at all. It had the market going with it and then it dropped like a brick. And that was the rest of the sell-off. So that was the second move in AMAT. And actually, you could have played this here for a teeny wee little move. It was very, very late after 3 o'clock. But anyways, this is institutional selling that happened in AMAT. But this started, let me go back to the AMAT. That started before the market fell. And this would have fallen anyways, okay, is what I'm saying. But the market helped it. So sometimes you do have the market if you've got it in your direction, your stock, and it helps you. But I usually am looking for things any day that are gonna go on their own. But sometimes you get a bigger move if you have the market helping you. Now this was a couple of weeks ago, early November, another really nice gap, really nice move, CTRP. Stock closed here, gap down, open, drop like a brick. Gap down again, fell. So here's where we closed on this day. This is the previous day back in early November, CTRP gap down. It gapped down to support. So I rate it and I said, wait a minute, are people gonna buy it? Are people gonna short it? I said, people are gonna short it. And then we short it. And what tells me that is the rating system. Another big, nice move. I didn't look this up what this did today, but just on this move here alone, you can see the stock was at 34 the night before. And within three days down, the stock almost lost $2. The low was around 25 something, so eight bucks plus. That is a big move for a stock to happen. That is institutional selling. And in the case of CTRP, that came in and just went straight down like a rock. Then there was NVIDIA, a really nice one that happened. This was in the middle of November. Stock closed here, gap down. This fell on the second, the first day, but the second day was a much, much bigger move in the NVIDIA. And again, if you're looking to day trade, you are really just doing it and getting out. You're in and you're out. Okay, you are in and you're out. And sometimes we're in and out in minutes. This was a big trade here though in NVIDIA. This was the second day though. Entry was short and you can do this as an option too. So we're, ta we're talking about the day trade here, which is the equity trade. But if you could have done this as an option, and I did call an option in this too, if you wanted to do it that way. The gap rating was high. The gap rated 24 points per my system. So the higher the rating, the higher the odds. Trading is all about odds. It's high odds. In other words, getting back to what I was saying about the market, low odds, the market makes new highs before the end of the year. Is that possible? Yes. Is it high odds? The answer is no. It was not high odds even when I talked about it on television the week of Thanksgiving. And it's even lower odds now. Could it happen? Yes, but low odds. So you don't trade low odds. You trade high odds because not every single trade that you take is going to work. And that's the other reason that I use a stop. So the stop in the video was 156.76. Boom, you're in. A thousand shares was the risk. This is an advanced risk. Did the ad. And an ad tells me that I'm getting the confirmation. AMAT was the same thing today. And actually, if you played the market too. So when I get the confirmation that it's going to have a bigger move than I anticipated, then I take more. So it's like you play it hard when you get it. You play it really hard in those days so that you have the big days because some days you may not do anything at all and some days you might have a loss. 
So when you get it, and you get it really good, and you get a really good gap, which this was, again, 24 points, you play it to the nth degree. So add price then average price was 153.93, 2,000 shares total, beautiful move down. Went even further than that, it went to a sick number on that day, that was absolutely ridiculous, but it was a huge trade. Went into the next number, was really watching for 149, broke it, bounced out, but this continued. And actually going back to this chart here, um, you could have done this as a put, and I had called a put on this day. It broke into this second day, but you know, you could have, you could have, this is just lower. I mean, NVIDIA, again, I didn't look at this today, but I know it's lower. So, and that, this is on its own without the market too. Any questions so far about gaps? And again, I'm going over shorts because, because I mostly focus on the shorts. And the reason that I focus on shorts is, and what's the irony is that the market's bullish, even though we sold off today, is that selling move happens quickly. Panic happens. There we go. Kim said it. They fall faster. So I do like the fast trades. The faster you're in, the faster you're out, the faster the move, you're the less at risk. So I, in an ideal world, I'd be out of every trade by, you know, 945. You can do an option trade as a day trade. Absolutely. Yes, you can. NVIDIA was a good example of that. The expensive one to spy. Could have done the spy today as a put, as a daily put. You could have even done it late today. And it would have been profitable because of the drop off. You could have bought a put in the spy today, but you wouldn't know. You would have had to get it in the right direction. You would have had to know it was going to fall. You know what I'm saying? So I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. That tells me the directional bias. Is it going to follow through in the direction of the gap or reverse? And that is what is the important piece of this because you need to get anything that you trade in the right direction. If you do not, you will lose money. If you do get the right trades and the right stocks or the market in the right direction, you will consistently profit. It is, it is about high odds when you trade, which means the consistency has to be there. This is not about getting every single trade that is a winner because that's just not possible. And if you think that you need that, then you don't understand what the market is. But that is why you have to be strict with yourself with money management, meaning every trade you take should have the same or equal risk. And you also should put stops. The stops are like the insurance, it's the protection. So whether I take 2,000 shares or 10,000 shares of something, if I ever would, uh, I'm use a stop. And we are always trading ticker symbols that have volume. I do not trade penny stocks, I do not trade crap. We trade stuff that really is being traded by institutions, not the no-namers and most of the things you would know. You would know you would have heard of them. Uh, let me just see a couple questions here. How do you know there will be a big move? The rating system tells me that. That's what I teach in my course. I go through the 26 points. If it rates 20 points or more, I know it's going to go in the direction of the gap and have a big move. Then I get the confirmation when I get the setup. I'm never in the trade in the pre-market. I still wait. I still wait until the open to take it. If it gaps, you, if it gaps, you will sell immediately or wait for certain minutes. No, I'm not. I'm not selling anything at all. I have to wait for the setup. So in the class, I teach the rating system and also to the entries. I'm not necessarily in every trade at 9:31. I'm never in anything at 9:30. I might not take a trade till 10. I don't know exactly when it's going to set up until I see it live, and that's the. That's the skill, okay? That's the skill of becoming a day trader. I've been doing this for 10 years. And actually, I've been doing gaps for 10 years, which is a very long time. A very, very, very long time to do one thing. That's one of the reasons I'm very good at what I do. It's one of the reasons I'm talking on Fox. So when you get good at one thing, you can become an expert. And then you can use that skill to make money. If you do not get good at one thing, you're jumping around at a million different things and some you'll make a little, some you'll lose a little, some you'll make a middle, and at the end of the day, you're nowhere. You have to get good at one thing if you wanna do well. There's too many people out there that are doing too many different things. That is the worst thing that traders can do and it is the most, it is the most common things that traders do. And, and I, I could say I got lucky or it was just fate that I got on to gaps early in my career, but I did know that I really only needed one thing to make a lot of money. And that was, you know, that was very a, a smart and wise decision for me because it was, it was the truth. And in all the years I've ever traded, and now since I've had the business for the last six years, I've realized that uh, many, many people just jump around. One minute they do futures, and then they do Bitcoin, and then they do Forex, and then they're doing swing trading, and then they're doing options, and then they're doing this, and they just never get good at anything. And then they flip around, and it's just waste time. 
I think when you, like, whether you like this concept that I'm discussing with you tonight, and hopefully you do, if you do, you can, you can call me. If you don't, then find something else that resonates with you because it really has to, number one, fit your schedule. You have to be able to trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning, no matter where you are in the world, and I'm talking Eastern time. So it has to fit your schedule. You have to say, oh, I get what she's saying here. This, this, this makes sense. I see the concept. Because the concept of gaps themselves and the momentum, and today again was a good example because of the market sell-off, the concept of playing on volatility and big moves and in that, in that post-pre-market action, it, the concept I'm telling you it makes sense. And many, many people that trade gaps don't do them right. I, I mean, I just know that. That's one of the reasons why I had to create my own system because there was so much stuff out there about gaps and a lot of it didn't work. And then I said, well, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. But then when I would do things, I would see there was something to them. And so then I created my own methodology. But it really is about the focus. And in an ideal world, I ever do one ticker symbol a day. Tomorrow, tomorrow the market's closed. So there's really nothing to look at tonight. I don't know what that means for Thursday morning action, but I know there's a bunch of stocks reporting earnings Thursday morning, and I do think we have action Thursday because of the market sell-off. You can find gaps every day. There's more in earnings season than not earnings season, but yes, there are gaps every day. Whether they're good ones or not, whether they're good or they qualify, per my system, 20 points or more is a different story. Sometimes I rate five things and I don't like any of them. It may rate 17, 18, 19, then I don't do anything. It has to rate 20 points or me for, more for me. Why do I choose gaps to day trade? Because they have big moves. And I'm a day trader, so you get in and you get out. I don't want to invest in something and be in it for our, uh, weeks and days at a time. And in this kind of volatile market, it's really not a good idea to be in stuff law overnight that long anyways. Unless you really are in a retirement account, I'm telling you, stay long, the market's bullish. But you should know before January 1st what you're doing with your retirement, even still, because if you are in a period of time where you think that you are gonna retire, I'm telling you 2019 could be nuts. And so therefore, you can't get scared and sell out of something right away. And if you're worried about the future, then maybe you need to take a step back and figure out where your money is at if you're near retirement or actually even if you're in retirement. Uh, you know. Uh, is it better to do in cash? Uh, or in futures? Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I think you're talking about just uh, trading the market. If you're talking about trading the market, no, you can use margin if you're day trading. I don't know why people are scared of margin. Margin means you are you have the use of the money of the buying power for that period of time. You're flat every day by four o'clock. You're out. I mean, you got to get out. So therefore, what are you worried about? And if I take a stop, then I lose what I risk. So for another word, say I'm just using an example. Say I say ten by fifty, boom, and it's a forty cents. So if I take 40 cent risk, if you take a thousand shares, that's $400 you'd lose. You don't lose the cost of the position. If the cost of the position is $52,000 in buying power, you're not losing $52,000 in buying power. If that position stops out, you're losing 400 bucks. So margin is, you just have to know, you have to understand the concept, number one. And number two, you have to know how to use it to your advantage. And the advantage is that if you're gonna do NTAP, Navinia, or even the SPY, you don't have to have $3 million in the bank to be able to take these positions. So you have a margin account. You can trade at a retail broker. You can trade at a prop place. Prop places usually require 2,500 bucks. At a retail place, you're gonna need 25,000 to day trade. You've got lots of choices of places to go. You need to day trade actively with margin or buying power. And if you wanna make money, you need to get comfortable with that concept and understand it. Now, if you don't know anything about that or are unsure, then read up about it or you do options. Options is you pay the cost of it. You don't need to worry about margin or buying power, but you still, if you wanna day trade options, need to have it set up as a margin account. Um, somebody said they're retiring and they're worried. You better talk to your financial planner the rating system you te I teach in the class, it's 16 hours. I've only got 32 minutes here. <laughs> How much money do you need to trade gaps? That's what I'm saying. You have to open up a day trading account. A prop place is going to require a decent one, a minimum of 2,500 bucks. If you go to some place that says you can do it for $200 or $500, I'd run like the wind because those places I wouldn't send your money. I do the rating in the pre-market. 
Going back to what I was saying, hedge funds, big banks, they control the market, they control big money, and so far, interesting. Whoever was the person that said it earlier, and I don't know if we're going to talk time talk about the market, but if not, I'll do a video and put it on YouTube tonight and go to Sock Switch and subscribe. That, that, whatever that guy said, I don't know what his name was, I think it was Michael, this is exactly what, I, this is exactly what I'm telling everybody. This year, 2019, is going to be so tricky. Everyone was saying that 2018 was so volatile. This year is going to look like a baby lamb. Next year is going to be like a lion for volatility because you're going to see a move like Monday, and you're going to see a gap up like that, and then you're going to see a sell-off like today, and everyone is going to go mad, mad, and they're going to then say, wow, well, they bought today and sold tomorrow. Everything's crazy. No, 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 no. That money that came into the overnight market is still there. There's, you don't know that that money disappeared today. The people that did that are in. And the chances that they all sold out today is not high. But you had other participants selling out today. That's the excitement and beauty about the market. You have so many, not only do you have a lot of different traders like us, you have a lot of hedge funds. Some are small, some are big. Some have $200 billion, some have $1 million. A hedge fund could be any size, okay? You have big banks. Not every bank is doing the same thing either, by the way. So you know what I'm saying? It's not like everybody gets on the phone and says, buy the market, sell it here. No, it doesn't work like that. And also you have triggers that some of these accounts and retirement accounts too, and you saw some of that today, that is triggered where a certain sell point is triggered off when it gets past a certain percentage. And you saw that in October too. Again, I'm getting far away here. Let me just flip through this. SFM was the gap from Friday. This was a nice move down. Here was the sell off there. Profit on this was 32.40, nice day on Friday. This was a quick one, 4,000 shares. I do with my system, with the rating system, I talked about how much money you need. 2,500 minimum at a prop account, 25,000 at a retail account, and I do think education is important first before you trade, so you know what you're doing. And I think that 2019 is gonna be very important. Why? Because it's gonna be more volatile than this year, and if you don't know how to trade or have education, you're gonna lose. And if you do, you could have a chance to do very well because of moves like today, and you gotta capture them, and you gotta see them, and you gotta know which direction to trade it. So you can make a living trading if you want to, but it is all about chunking it out. You chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Don't look at like this is the last day you're ever going to trade in the world. You have every day 500, 1,000, 2,000, 300, 400. Every day you're pulling money in and chunking it out. I did call this option very late into the close on Friday. I'm just going to show you this here. The market gapped up. This was Friday night, gapped up Monday morning. So I called this trade very, very late on Friday. I saw the buying in the market. This was it. This was Friday up into 1.30. This is all the institutions that were buying into this into Friday morning in the gap up. I called the 280 calls expiring this Friday. It was an immediate win. You just got out in the gap up and it was a profitable trade. It was 81% return investment. Contracts cost 160 and you could have sold them for 290. So you bought it Friday into the close, boom, sold it into the gap up on Monday morning. Okay. And you could have made 2,600 bucks. This was in the SPY. But the, the benefits of trading options really is you don't need margin. But I personally like the day trades of the quick in and out. But options are a way to make money also if you can't be in the trading room between 9.30 and 10. So anyways, if you want to learn how to trade, I do think education is important. You can learn my system. It's a short time daily. Again, I'm looking at for high probability, big move, early confirmation of the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries. You've got to chunk it out. You can achieve your goals, but you have to be focused. You have to be like a laser beam. And I'm telling you that you can. And if you want to make a lot of money, then you will. So I teach the class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. One strategy, one system. That's all that I do. So if you'd like to learn the class is December 15th and 16th, 9 to 5. Cost of the class is $59.99 US dollars. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class is online. The combo course is $64.99, which is Trends in the Gap class. And I'm doing an early bird through this Saturday. One price, $59.99 for the Golden Gap, and you get the trading room and options letter free through February 28th. So three months free, you get all my calls, like the ones we talked about here today, and you get to be in the live trading room with me, and I think it's going to be a great year. 2018 was a great year. Uh, just quickly here, let me see the questions. How long does it take to rate a gap? Um, well, I take my time, but if, you know, if I wanted to, I could rate a gap you know, in five seconds. But I like to take my time. So I sit down, I prep, 
I would say if you're brand, brand new, give yourself six to nine minutes to, to rate one gap. You know, if you want to take your time and see everything and make sure you don't make any mistakes, if you're rushing it, you could do it like in two, three minutes. But, you know, I don't like to rush it. So, you know, the better prepared I am, the earlier I'm up, the earlier I'm looking at my charts, you know, the more situated I am in my mind, and it's just better. Um, do I do the rain in the pre-market? Yes. Um, I think that's it. Anyone have any other questions? If you're interested in signing up for the class or the early bird, email me at Melissa at the stockswish.com. If you want a trial, you can sit in on the room Thursday and Friday for free for two days. Email me at Melissa at the stockswish.com. Again, markets close Wednesday, National Day of Mourning, and markets sold off today, and we'll, we'll see here. Let me just quickly pull up here. Let's just see where we're at tonight. And then I'll and then I'll swing it on over because I'm well, we were down a little now we're up a little so we hit down here it looks like the low we broke 270 look at that yeah thank you everybody thanks for having me okay we want to thank melissa for joining us we want to find the right the stocks whoosh